part of the HPC team in, in Ghent. So part of the team who's organizing the debrief today. Uh, and he's going to introduce Easy. Um, I already got a, a very good introduction to people who saw the previous talk about environment modules. Uh, I, people who are not familiar to the team, uh, we're probably from Ghent University, which uh, is a performance computing team. Um, it's a central uh, contact for a, a high performance computing at Kent University. Um, so we have a uh, big uh, computing infrastructure, seven clusters at the moment, uh, and one shared system between uh, the Flemish universities. Um, third tier one uh, was one, number 119 and top 500 uh, in 2012. <laughs> um, there's eight people on the team. They're all here today. Um, so, yeah, one uh, big part of the uh, work at the, our team is to install the scientific software for uh, scientists. Uh, they want to do simulations, they want to do their research, and they need the software to run in the cluster. They can't install it themselves. Uh, they ask us to do this. Um, and of course, one of the models is uh, automate everything. So, we have seven clusters. Uh, we're not going to install manually the software on each cluster again and again. Um, we automate the build procedure. Um, and so easy build through what I need uh, for this. Um, as in the previous talk, Aaron explained, uh, building scientific software is really fun for us. Uh, very good documentation. Uh, everything works flawlessly, of course. Uh, no, not the case. Uh, yeah, as he said, it's written for people uh, who need it to work for themselves. Um, they use hard coded settings like their parts are all uh, hard coded. So if you want to use the environment modules, as we saw earlier, you have to do you have to patch here because uh, if you expect these libraries to be a not then you need to use the environment. It's we So it's very time consuming, also for the uh, HPC teams. Um, and the, the tools that were available um, are lacking. So uh, we prefer to build everything from source. So the installation is not just downloading the RPM and installing it. Uh, it's high performance computing. So you want to use with the CPU, you want to use all the instructions it has to compile for your CPU. Um, and to do that for scientific software, you, you say, yeah, use Gen2. Uh, well, Almost none of the packages that uh, these researchers want are already in there, so you have to do it yourself. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then why restrict yourself to one operating system? So they're hard to, the current, there are tools out there. Uh, other institutes that made just uh, a list of bash scripts. They just run them. It's bash, 10,000 of lines. Uh, not really maintainable. Um, or just standalone. Uh, start a new thing every time. Uh, but they don't try to reuse anything or very OS dependent, uh, as I said, of course. Um, uh, and some projects, they know they're really hard to install, like Dolphin. Uh, they have a tool called Dorsal, which is again, bash scripts, no reuse. Uh, well, some good reuse, it works, but only for software, it's really hard to uh, So, uh, as I said, yeah, not all of them are, uh, are packaged. Uh, and just, yeah. Make an RPM, yes, but then the other distros, uh, people use another environment, you have to redo the work again. Uh, also, yeah, like um, current tools, current uh, OS is really hard to install multiple versions of the program because this is uh, often a big requirement. Researchers all use the same system. Um, researcher A wants version 1.0, uh, researcher 2 uh, found out there's new features in 1.2, so he wants to use that one. They all both have to be available in the system. Um, and we compile them with different compilers. We compile the Tendal compiler, GCC, CI, um, because sometimes different compilers give different results. Or we want to test uh, which one generates the most performance code um, and leave it there. Um, for example, G we would build with, uh, everything with Tendal because mostly that's the, the best performance, but GCC. Uh, the researchers also want to use the same thing they have on their laptop, and then they, there they compile it with GCC. Uh, so we want to make both available. Uh, 
uh, say you can switch KPI stacks, uh, change the monthly and all. So what we wanted uh, was a flexible framework. So we wanted other people uh, to be able to join us uh, in the effort and uh, add features easily. So uh, had to be flexible, modular, pluggable. Um, so a big part of this, uh, reproducible builds. Because the scientists, they need to be able to reproduce their uh, experiments. So uh, if they can do it in one cluster, but then the system is gone after three years, what do you want to do? A little thing again. Well, we try to make uh, install the same version of the software and all its dependencies in the same version. Um, already explained for existence of different versions. Uh, a big deal is also the sharing of the effort. So we put a lot of effort in it and we want to share it with other teams uh, all over the world. Uh, but if we share it with them, hopefully they share back. Uh, and in the future, maybe we can easily install something without having to do much effort. Uh, of course, everything has to be fully automated. And dependency resolution, because we install dependencies. Uh, so we don't want to build everything one by one. We just say build this and all its dependencies. So uh, that's what Easy Build does. Uh, it's written in Python, so people uh, can use it because we, we like Python. Uh, we use it for all our tools. Uh, Easy Build has been developed in house for two and a half years before we made it public. Uh, it was completely rewritten. Uh, with good practices in, in, uh, in mind uh, and released as open source in 2012. Then we finally got the state API in November. Um, and since then we've been doing C monthly releases, not monthly. Uh, uh, and we're working on this continuously because our users keep requesting us to install software. Uh, other teams are requesting me to add features uh, and we try to release uh, frequently.
people try to be very helpful. They ask you, they give you just one binary. Sometimes it's, it's closed source, and you know, as well, just give you binary and ask you questions. There's no way to patch it when you're running. So you have to actually answer the questions. We have support for that.
practices to actually do it. Uh, but we still need uh, something we do need is better test for the software. So we install the package, but we're not really sure if it's doing what the researcher wants us to do. We ask them to give us an example, but that doesn't always go. Um, there's also no problems with environment module setting and LD library paths. If you have a lot of dependencies, this becomes big and might strain your storage system if it has to go through all the directories. So there's solutions for that are bad. Uh, these are being investigated. Uh, okay, maybe I convinced you you want to use it. Uh, well, what do you need? Uh, Linux. Uh, it will work uh, we, on the yeah, we test this on the Fedora Debian, CentOS, uh, so it, we have a developer meeting it on a daily basis on OS X. Uh, we have no Windows support planned. Uh, this is because there's no environment modules for Windows, so we can't use it. It's not because we can't. Uh, by 2.4, so we run uh, some uh, old sy systems that still have by 2.4, mm -hmm. we support it for now. Uh, not sure for how long, but for now. Everything will be written by the four. And uh, a C compiler to start your first build of a GCC uh, or the Intel. Um, installing easy build is well, a good step. We'll look into providing RPMs and uh, dev files uh, soon because that's maybe the easiest way to actually get it installed. But you can install easy build with easy build. You can find all of this on the uh, repo. Um, configure it uh, as much as you like. It might try to make it very easy to uh, make your changes. So, uh, if you want to know more, we have a website, we're on GitHub, uh, you can go in from Wi-Fi. We're very active on the uh, IRC, the uh, channel easy build on Fino. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, questions you can also make.
mean, the sources are stored it's like anywhere or if there's so you're the well, well, when you run with the sources for the yes. some of them might be some obscure old. Right? Exactly. So this is one of the known problems. Uh, sources can be removed from the web. Mm -hmm. um, there are some efforts to actually start um, the sources that we're allowed to, to distribute, um, to collect them somewhere on the mirror. Uh, there's a project being talked about. But it's external from this. It's just like yeah, we that's a separate it. problem. Okay. Yeah, we're not trying to solve it. Also on your website, uh, an alternate version of it. We, we have a YouTube video as well. Just on, on, on the archiving sources thing, a certain scientific package, which will not be named, um, changed the sources without changing the version number. Uh, just quietly board, changed okay. it online. Um, yeah, there are several ones that do. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's why in the new version we added actually checksum. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Uh, is there some sort of procedure for the uh, easy building uh, files? Yes, so they're on a get file. So when you pull the uh, file, you pull the um, analysis of the uh, file? Or? Uh, so currently th these are just uh, easy configs, so you pull all of them in. They're just getting text about a few lines. So you have to maintain uh, the local copy of the, all the it, it just gets installed with Easy. So Easy Build is a framework, the Easy Box, so the implementations of the build procedure, and then the specifications. Of the so we, we call these examples. So they're known to work, and we try to share them with everyone, but they're considered examples. You can make as many as you want. And if they work, please share them with us. Okay, last one. Sorry, sorry, sorry Peter. Intersecting with another big thing that's boss then. You're packaging up a file tree and practical modules. Could you make a Docker container out of this? Does that make sense? I'm talking about you know code. Um, I'm sure you probably could. Yes, but we're not we're not going to do that. Well, we haven't looked into it yet, but it's just like in basically an RPM or a dev file. Well, you can make a Docker of the, the applications and ship that and, and, and keep it for um, archaeology. You know, keep it for um, you know discussion. We've been looking into these Docker people talk to them, but not to me. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, Jens.